You know, for a lot of beginner watercolorists, it's tough to know what brands of paints, brushes, paper, etc. to buy, especially if you don't want to spend a mini fortune testing that out on your own. Well, hopefully today's video will help with that a little bit because for the very first time today, I will be testing out the Paul Rubens brand of watercolor tube paints. Now, the Paul Rubens company reached out to me to test this product out. So today I will be giving my honest review of these paints. This just barely arrived in the mail, so let's open it up and see what we've got. It appears to be packaged well with plastic wrapped over the nice box containing the paints. Now, I don't usually do unboxing videos, but this was a request from my husband, so this is for him. But if you don't want to see all the unboxing stuff, you can skip over to where I will show you how to paint a pretty and simple landscape using these paints. All right, now there is a little pamphlet inside here with paint names and colors, as well as some information on how the paint is made and some of the positive selling points of this paint. This set they sent me has 24 colors, but they also sell one with 36 colors. I have some Amazon links for several different countries if you're interested in purchasing or looking into these products a little more, and they are in the description of this video. I also have an exciting offer concerning this product that I will share with you a little later on. So I'm wanting to paint something today that can use a lot of these colors to give it an honest chance. So I've decided to do a little landscape of this wooden fence post today with some flowers scattering the background. This is my reference picture here. So let's start by testing out some blues to see what will work for the sky. All right, I'm gonna start by making some swatches of Berlin blue, indigo and French blue to see what they look like on this piece of scrap paper. Now I'm just going to take some tiny amounts of this paint and place them on my palette tray. Then I'll add some water to the pigment and paint little samples on my paper along with the names of the colors so I can remember which one I liked when it's time to paint. Here's more of a watered down or light valued sample. Now let's see what the darker value looks like when we add in some more pigment. Well, all three of these are very nice colors. I think the French blue is probably closest to what I'm needing today though. Now I'm gonna test out some browns to see if one will work for my wooden post. I've got brown umber and viridian red here. Both of those browns are nice and the brown umber is going to work for the darker shadow areas but I do need more of a lighter brown for the posts so let's see what mixing some of this earth yellow with the brown umber will do. Yes this is going to work better. Moving on to some greens now I'm going to try olive green dark, may green and oriental green. Again, I'm curious about what mixing some of these colors could create. So let's try a mixture of olive green and may green together. The oriental green is really bright and very beautiful, but it's probably not quite right for my grass in my landscape. So I think I'm gonna use the other two. Now for some flower colors. Let's try a yellow, orange, and pink. This is chromium yellow, cadmium orange, and quinacridone maroon. These colors are also very vibrant and pretty. In fact, all of the colors I've tried so far are really nice. They're painting on smooth. I like them so far. A lot of the colors I've tried so far are probably going to work for my landscape painting, but I'm kind of curious as to what some of these other colors in the set look like. So some of the next colors I'm going to try out are Naples yellow, lemon yellow, perylene maroon, cobalt turquoise dark, translucent turquoise, and phthalo blue. Ooh, some of these colors are extremely lovely. I especially love the phthalo blue and the translucent turquoise in this little set. These colors would be perfect for painting an ocean scene. I'll have to add that to my list of things to paint. I'm actually really glad I tried out these other colors also because I think I'm gonna add some perylene maroon and Naples yellow to my landscape today. 
So far, I'm pretty impressed with these paints, but it's time to really put them to the test and actually try painting something with them. So the drawing I've done for this is pretty simple. Let's quickly go over it together. First, I have a slightly slanted horizontal line in the background. This is for the horizon. This is placed just below the halfway mark on the page. Then for the main feature, I have two vertical wooden posts. These are supposed to be rustic, so my lines are not perfectly straight here. Then on my posts, I have some lines around the post for some barbed wire. Then I've also extended four lines of that barbed wire out from this post, stretching off to the right side of the page. Now along my horizon line, I've drawn some rough shapes for where I'll place some bushes or trees in the distant background. And then I've added some flowers here in the foreground that as you can see, aren't actually in my reference picture, but I think that this is gonna be a great addition to this painting. I've got some shapes for some foxgloves on this left side of the page, some daisy flower shapes here on the bottom left, extending to the middle of the page, and then I have some lumpy circles for some poppies on the right side of the page, making the circles a little smaller as I draw some more into the background. Because I'm planning to use quite a bit of water for my background washes, I am going to tape my paper down with some artist tape to help with any warping. All right, let's get to painting and see how these Paul Rubens paints react when doing washes, color mixing, and blending. Let's quickly go over the colors I've decided to use from this set. Here I have Naples yellow, earth yellow, chromium yellow, may green, olive green dark, French blue, perylene maroon, quinacridone maroon, and last but not least, brown umber. I also have some clean water, a paper towel, some masking fluid to cover up all these little flowers before I put washes of color on my page, and of course, some brushes. I've got a small old brush with a little bit of dish soap in the bristles to help clean out the fluid later. Then I basically have a small, medium, and large round brush. This is a number zero round brush for small details, a number six, and a large number 12 for the washes. All of these supplies that you've seen today are listed in the description of this video if you're interested. All right, let's start by first applying the masking fluid. I'll start by painting all these little daisy flower shapes, the poppies, and the tops of the foxgloves. I'm actually going to add some more smaller dots of fluid out here in the distant field just under the horizon as well to represent some very distant flowers. Now, as an option, you can also mask off the fence posts. I've decided to grab a slightly larger flat brush for this so that it wouldn't take forever to paint these. Of course, you can just paint your wash around these posts if you'd rather, but I feel like the background turns out better for me when I can work more quickly and I'm not trying to paint around things. All right, when all of the masking fluid is completely dry, then you can start on the background wash. Using this number 12 brush, I'm going to paint the sky area or everything above the pencil horizon line with water first. Now, while that's still wet, start adding in some of this blue to the sky. I'm going to have some areas lighter than others and maybe even leave some white areas to look like distant clouds. Of course, the choice is up to you. Now, 
Now, if you don't have this particular brand of paints or particular paint colors, you can find similar colors with what you already have. But I did promise some exciting news concerning this particular paint set. And that is that I have a special limited time discount code for 10% off for anyone living in the United States. This is only effective July 13th, 2023 until July 16th, 2023. So that's only three days. So make sure that if you want to buy this set, you act quickly if you want 10% off. You can find this discount code along with the links to this product in the description of this video. As a little tip, if you want to help emphasize your white or your cloud areas, you can use a paper towel and wrap it around your finger and then dab off some of the color. After the sky is completely dry, I'm ready to add in the foreground greenery wash. So again, I'll start by painting everything below the horizon line with water first. When you're ready to put down the colors in this section, start with some Naples yellow nearest the horizon line. Then I'll mix a little bit of this May green with some brown umber for a more natural green color. Then I'll add that in under the yellow, leaving a few areas with lighter or less amounts of color. Now I'll make a nice dark green by adding in some olive green dark and some more brown umber. Then I'll add that in mostly around the bottom area of the page and maybe a little bit in between the lighter green. You know, this paint has really done well with these washes. It blends and it spreads really easily. I'm not having to work hard to get it to do what I'm wanting. It's going on really nice and smooth. You know, I don't paint landscapes very often. That's not my forte, and I think it's definitely something that I personally need to work on and get better at. So hopefully this painting turns out okay. Now that the background washes are completely dry, we can start adding in some of the details. Let's start with the number six brush and some of this May green and paint the trees in the distant background. And then after some of that May green is on, I'll add some of this darker paint that we mixed earlier into the trees for more of the shadowy areas. A good rule of thumb here is to keep the lighter green closer to the tops of the trees and have the darker green nearer to the bottom. I'm going to switch over to the smallest brush now and using some of this dark green, I'll add in some thin grass lines to my painting. But as I've been trying to do this, I'm feeling like this brush isn't quite right for this job. So I'm actually gonna switch over to a number one liner brush and see if that can hold the paint a little bit better. Yes, this change of brushes was a good idea. Okay, I'm just adding in some grassy spots, mostly in the corners and bottom of the page with maybe a little bit around the fence posts and at the base of where some of the flower stems are gonna go later. Now that I've got some of this grass in there, I feel like I need to ground it a little bit so it doesn't appear like it's floating. So I'm going to add some horizontal skiffs of green along the ground, near or under the grass that I just painted to make it look a little bit more natural. 
Now this number zero brush that I was using earlier works just fine for this part. It just wasn't creating the fine lines as well as I needed for the grass. This is coming along pretty well so far, but I do feel like it needs some even darker areas along the ground. So here I'm using some of this brown umber and adding that for some of the shadow areas. I'm focusing this mostly around the base of the post and at the bottom left hand corner of the page. After the painting is completely dry, then we can take off all of this masking fluid with your fingers or an eraser and can begin painting the foreground. Let's paint the fence post first. So start by mixing some brown umber and some earth yellow together to create a nice light brown. Then paint a light valued wash of this brown over the tops of the posts. And I have a couple of daisies here at the bottom of the post, so I'm going to need to paint around those so they can stay nice and white in color. Next, I'm going to start layering some brown streaks along the fence post to make it look a little rough and rustic. I'm going to paint around and leave a few areas lighter in value and color, and also continue to add darker and darker values of brown, mostly to the left sides of the posts. To get your paint darker in value, you can add more pigment to your paint so it has less water, and you can also add more brown umber if you need to. At this point, to get some really dark shadows on the left side of these posts, I'm just going to use some straight brown umber and finish these off. I've changed out my water to start fresh here, and then let's take some of this chromium yellow and using the small brush, paint some dots of yellow in the centers of the daisies. Now I'll take a bit of this dark green and add a few stems for these daisies. Next, still using the small brush, I'll take a bit of brown umber and paint my barbed wire lines. And it's up to you if you have your wires plain or if you add some little barbs to them. I do think I'll wait to paint these lines going across the page though until I've painted in all of the poppies. Alright, let's paint these foxgloves next. I'll start by painting a little bit of May Green right at the very top, and then I'll start adding in some of this Quinacridone Maroon. Thank you. 
Then after that base pink color is on, I'll take some of this slightly darker perylene maroon and put some dots on the foxgloves to help represent individual flowers. Then I'll take some green and add some stems and leaves to my foxgloves. Now I'll make a rusty red-orange color for my poppies by mixing some perylene maroon and chromium yellow together. Then I'll paint in all of the circles of poppies that I made earlier, plus maybe a few extra dots of color extending out farther into the fields, making the dots smaller the farther out into the fields they appear. So now that I've really been able to test these paints out, I am actually pretty impressed by these. This is a great little set, especially if you're just starting out using watercolors because it comes with a lot of beautiful colors at a very reasonable price. This 24 set of colors can run anywhere from between $50 to $60. So that makes each 5 ml tube of paint cost only about $2 to $3. It's really very reasonable for the quality of paint you're getting. Next, I'll take some green and add a few stems and leaves to the poppies. And then I'll take a bit of brown umber and add a small center for just a few of the poppies. And last but not least, let's finish this painting off by painting the remaining wire off to the right side of the page. I'll use some brown umber for this, and I've also moved back to the liner brush to paint these. And here is this finished, fun, easy landscape using this Paul Rubens watercolor paint set. I do think that this is a great little paint set with good quality paints. I'm pretty sure I'll be using these again. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.